today i'd like to introduce uh, you all to mr jay karan he is the president of the indian uh, biodynamic association and uh, also one of the pioneering uh, conservationist and environmentalist of uh, our india he has uh, worked since the early 80s in the field of uh, ecology and conservation and after a meeting with mr rao phali famous uh, ornithologist yes triggered the his interest in and passion in the ecology and to save the, the greenery and the animal life of this world now oh, he has also worked in farming and in organic cultivation of orchards and one of the first to start a organic company in the very early days when it was uh, much uh, ahead of the times and uh, in the early 90s and right now he has devoted his whole energy and time for the conservation being such a intelligent well educated man he could have easily been a banker in some big corporation earning millions in jet setting but he has sacrificed all that and taken on the field work propagating the natural farming and in that connection right now he is primarily involved in a couple of ngos and then in the biodynamic association work now mr jaykan i'd like to know what attracted you towards biodynamic system of farming okay. uh well because uh, i'd like to go back a few uh, years uh, behind <clears throat> my interest in um, land management grew out of uh, trying to find a solution for wasteland that we have in india and from the early 80s till the mid 90s you can say i was mostly involved with working with tree planting collecting seeds from forest with ngos and trying to start tree nurseries and trying to encourage small farmers to take up agroforestry as a alternate to farming basically to increase the tree population tree population and also to have better land use because a lot of the land were like wasteland mm. which they were only using for extensive grazing mm. so <clears throat> my interest in the environment came uh, at least the positive aspect of what i could do was by planting trees and trying to save uh, indigenous tree varieties and trying to propagate them um then my family we were at that time in uh, the field of bus transportation and we felt the government would nationalize our bus uh, the private bus sector so in the early 80s around the same time i was interested in tree planting my extended family we decided to move into um, fruit cultivation you know cultivating mangoes cashew sapotas different kinds of fruit tam tamarind and things like this So over the years, uh, we developed a lot of wasteland into productive fruit orchards, and one thing led to the other. And in 1990, I set up a small organic fruit processing company uh, to process the mangoes and the sapotas and the other coffee that we were cultivating in that time. And there was no market at that time uh, for organic products. Not Systematic within India, market. but uh, abroad, it was already a well-established mm. uh, market. in europe and much more than in the us at that time in the 90s um at that time i got an inquiry from one german buyer who asked me if i had demeter quality mangoes mm -hmm. so in the beginning i was so stupid i thought demeter meant some particular variety of mango like an alfonso or a, a neelam or something like totapuri so i asked what what is this variety of mango and then they said that it was a way of a method of cultivating the land mm. that you do it uh, and if you did it in a particular way you get a brand or a certificate called dimita and that was how i started that was my introduction to biodynamics in the early 90s <clears throat> at that time uh, because we were very lucky to have uh, a wonderful teacher from new zealand called mr peter proctor who was already in his mid 60s at that time when he came to india and uh, although the biodynamic method which is a method of farming um, introduced to the world by a german or an austrian philosopher called rudolf steiner it took a long long time for those ideas to reach india it did not come from the west 
rather it came from the east, mm. from New Zealand. And Peter Proctor being such a good teacher, uh, he did away with many of the old-fashioned ideas from mainland Europe and he presented this idea in a very uh, holistic and a different perspective to us in India. And uh, although I was fairly well aware of the organic movement, attended many programs, um, but I found that the biodynamic method had something very unique mm. to offer us. Meaning, um, in organic farming, we are very, very earthbound. Mm. We look at only the earthly influences and things like that. Whereas we forget that we are living on a planet mm. which is slipping through space and which also has another dimension, the cosmic dimension. We get so much of energy from, it's obvious we get a lot of energy from the sun, from the moon. But if you go back into our old ancient uh, ideas, not only in India, across the world, people did believe that there was a lot of influence coming from the different constellations, from the, the moon planet, cycle and all. Moon cycle, the planetary cycle. Mm -hmm. So biodynamic farming, in a way, incorporates this other dimension mm -hmm. to agriculture, where we believe that uh, plants um, are influenced by cosmic rhythms. Mm. And if we understand how to work with those cosmic and the lunar rhythms, in a way we synchronize the growing of the crop with these rhythms. And um, another interesting aspect of biodynamic farming is it offers certain, you can say like medicines, what are known as preparations, mm. uh, which are used in a homeopathic mm. manner in very small quantities. Like triggers, like catalyst. I'd say yes, like catalyst, mm. something like inoculants, you can say. A lot of it is made from cow manure, mm. and like a thing known as the cow horn manure. It's made by filling cow horn, manure in a cow horn. And after six months, you get a kind of a bio-fertilizer, mm. which if you introduce in the soil by stirring it in water, you sort of restock the missing um, what shall I say, all the biological life, the energies, you can say, which we have destroyed either because of chemical farming mm. or because we cleared the trees and the soil is scorched, mm. that there is no bio-life, it sort of sterilizes the soil. Mm. It's one way of reintroducing this uh, aspect of a living soil. So, these uh, unique features of uh, biodynamic movement, that is one of the yeah. uh, cosmic element of it, yeah. planets and all. Yes. And second is uh, these preparations. Yeah. These attracted you in the beginning towards the biodynamic. Yes, it sort of made me feel that it completed the picture of mm. organic more farming. Holistic. Yes, it was more like the icing on top of the cake mm. in the organic farming system. It was like the final uh, or giving a very good perspective to the thing. Mm. One of the things due to the association. Yes, because uh, at the moment a lot of the products, India is a very major player, I mean a big player in the world biodynamic movement. But what I believe is uh, a lot of these movements are in some ways consumer driven. Mm. It's not so much only the grower uh, aspect. Um, India does grow a lot of uh, biodynamic teas, cotton, fruits, spices. Mm -hmm. But at the moment it seems to be more export driven to a market where people recognize that biodynamic food is mm. very good quality food. It's not just food without chemicals, but it's much more than mm. uh, just no chemicals in the food or a good system of land management. Um, yeah. Yes. So that led you into the, the association. A national association. We felt um, that we need to have an association so that we can take this message to the small farmers. Mm. Because at one level, the corporate you know, um, well-managed plantations, they have all the resources. resources and the manpower and the knowledge, but getting this knowledge out to the millions of farmers where, who are actually doing mm. the, the work was a major challenge. Mm. And our experience seems to show that our farmers take to this idea very, very mm. easily. Mm. They're quite they, receptive. Receptive because of uh, people do have a very strong belief in the influence of the astro. Mm. much more than any country in the world. Mm. Uh, of course, people use it a lot for horoscopes and other things. But still, in every part of India, wherever you go, people do mm. believe that the cosmic does influence 
life on earth and then the importance of working with animal cow manure based mm. is already there is already there and they also find it mm. okay it's another new medicine that we are making from mm. uh, from our lakshmi from the from the cow the goddess of fertility now yeah. the association is based in bangalore at the moment yes our registered office is based in bangalore and if because people want to consult you uh, or advise or have your conduct some short term courses at how the, do they do uh, it um at the moment we have two 10 day programs twice a year mm. in kodakanal because um, in biodynamic we also work with some six herbs mm. uh, which we use in a way to bring back so what we do elements. you yeah. give me the you can tell the address yeah because many of the viewers yes. are small farmers they like to contact yes. you yes they can so our web page is www.biodynamics b i o t y n a m i c s biodynamics dot in dot in just repeat that yeah www biodynamics dot in in for India and if people write an email to you they can uh, yes. get details of those of courses. the thing and also in our web page all this information of the courses when they are being held all this information is there. and it's a ten day residential course yes at the moment it's in English but we are also doing in regional languages in Tamil. Uh, in Karnataka, there are some NGOs working with farmers and and twice a year. Yes, twice a year in Kodaikanal. In Kodaikanal, yes. And there's accommodation and food also provided. Yes, it's a fully residential uh, program. Uh, we stay in a, a monastery in in the hills, and we have a herbal garden about one kilometer from this monastery where these herbs are all grown. Mm. and we have about 5 6 resource people who come and spend the week 10 days with us and is it an expensive course um by our indian standards yes mm. i would think because uh, staying in the hills uh, is not about so easy how much do you think it will cost it costs about 10000 rupees for the for the whole thing for the whole course accommodation mm. food and the training cost mm. 10 days yeah And you get a certificate dollars. or something yes, like that. Yes, from the association that you participated in a introductory course in mm. biodynamics. Mm. Yeah. And uh, this will be beneficial for uh, people who are intending to get into farming and also the already into farming. Um. Yes, because definitely, but uh, it's more interesting for people who are doing vegetable and fruit cultivation. Mm. Primary Ra- focus on vegetables. On vegetables, cereals. more on crop cultivation for the bigger picture of growing trees to reclothe the you know the 100 million hectares mm. of wasteland probably but biodynamic farming is a holistic farming it doesn't talk only about these preparations or the cosmic element it mm. it generally takes into account a holistic land management and it includes the animal husbandry animal husbandry is given a lot of importance a farm is supposed to be like an organism mm. uh where it takes on the character of the the farmer himself yeah mm. so with this we'll conclude the first interview about the biodynamic uh, association and its some of its activities